Mr. Yeager, uh, whom I've had in contact with, you probably don't remember it, but it was very favorable, helping me with a, a lady who was having a problem, and a lady who had some emotional problems, and you, were, you did a fantastic job, I thought, like that. But I wanted to ask uh, Dr. Gaston, um, you know, given the situation here in Valdosta that the city is becoming increasingly uh, more, more uh, of one racial ethnic group, more black, uh, how do you feel, uh, what do you think? I know as, as a black person living here in Valdosta, I'm very proud. I've always loved Valdosta. I graduated from Valdosta State College. I taught school here. Uh, there are such wonderful, wonderful people in the city of Valdosta and in, in Lowndes County that nurtured me as a young man and helped me. Uh, I see that the city is becoming increasingly more black. I noticed that one realtor said that, I noticed one realtor said that when people come in into the city, when uh, airmen come in, military guys come in, they, all, they don't ask for listings in the city of Valdosta because they've already heard that we've got a 80%, 75% black school system. Black or white, those people are going to look for a educational system that's more balanced. We as residents, I'm, I'm, I live here in Valdosta, I'm purchasing a house in the city of Valdosta as we speak. We can't do anything about that because if, you know, I, I live in a neighborhood that's pretty, pretty good, we, that's why I'm here. As a black man, I, I don't have children, I've never been blessed to have children, and I'm 64 years of age now, but I do want to be able to give back. So I want to know what, how do you feel about uh, what we as blacks can do to help the educational system because at my coming up, I found a separate but equal was not, did not work then, and I don't think it's going to work next, at, but currently. However, I do feel that we have to kind of do our best to ensure that our children get the best education that's possible. Um, first of all, I don't think it's, it's a color issue. I think it's an education issue. Uh, it's the support that the educational system has, the expectations that we have of our students and of our teachers. Uh, I've seen the all-black towns that were very successful, very prop, uh, prosperous. Um, and, but, but it's, uh, and I, I came here from Kansas, and uh, years ago, in western Kansas in particular, there were a number of small black towns that grew up out in, in western Kansas. Very prosperous. They didn't survive, most of them, because the railroad or the highways went the other way, and that was critical for their survival. Uh, but, but when you, when you read the history of them and you look at the dedication, the expectation that they had for the kids, the expectation that they had for the teachers, uh, that's a, a critical part of it. Uh, what, one of my favorite quotes comes from Buckminster Fuller. And Buckminster Fuller said this, um, he was a scientist, philosopher, did a lot of things. He, his view is this, he said that all of us are born geniuses. But what happens is life disgeniuses us. Okay? So in, in most of it, if you think about this, look around, you will see that young kids today, and I talk to you know, people about this, and I said something maybe about me, but I think I must have been like one and a half or two before I start crawling or trying to walk. These little kids get home about three or four weeks later, they're turning over, they're getting it all and stuff, they're tasting stuff. They're curious. They're excited. You talk to little kids, two years old, what do you want to be? Um, I want to be a fireman, and then I want to be an astronaut. They have all these great uh, dreams, expectations, but then somehow they go somewhere and somebody says, you're just going to be like your dad. You, you ain't no good. You ain't going to be no good. You can't do that. You can't do math. And this disgeniusing them, and by the time they get to the third grade, they've already tuned out. Okay. So, but we have to see that, we have to take responsibility for that. That's where the investment's going to be. We, people, anybody who's investing today is are, are interested in what is going to be the return on my investment. 
if you can show me that I am going to get something worthwhile from investing my money, I'm going to put it there. If these kids don't make it, we're not going to make it. Our Social Security is not going to be there. The streets are not going to be clean and taken care of and all the things that Larry's mentioned that we need. Uh, who's going to pay for it? So we have to say, okay, if it's going to happen, it's got to begin with me. Uh, you know, Michael Jackson, man in the mirror. Got to look at that. And so rather than blaming the victims, we have to say, what do we have to do to adjust them? Uh, to uh, address them. I've had several opportunities to visit uh, prisons in, in, in um, Georgia, uh, in Kansas, and in Oregon. Some of the most intelligent black men I've met behind bars. So it's not a matter of intelligence, it's a matter of what's happening to them and what kind of environment they're in. So I'll just follow back just a second. Because I'm in the real estate business, uh, part of what you said that the realtor, realtor said, it is true what they said, but that's not all the reason. The reason a lot of it is because when people PCS into move from other bases all over the world, they have friends here that they have come in contact with at other bases all over the world. So they obviously call somebody they know, or they call their commanding officer and say, I'm PCS and in, can you give me some advice about the community? Can you tell me about the real estate? If those people live in Grove Point and their kids go to the Lowndes County school system and they're getting a good education, then obviously they're going to say, look, you know, I, my kids are in Lowndes County school. I, I'm guilty of it. My kids went to the Hayara school system. And I put the Hayara school system on top of any school system around them. And I mean, I'm guilty of saying that because my kids got a great education, love the teachers, never had a problem. So it's a lot of word of mouth. Um, and not necessarily so much as the true quality of education. It's, it's just what they've heard when they're coming into the community. And they believe that because that's their friends and their commanding officers. And they want county schools because their kids go to county schools and they say that's where they need to go. So if that helps you. Uh, 